hello students i welcome you all for the course on kinematics of machines myself professor pravin gosavi i am working as a assistant professor in department of mechanical engineering kits college of engineering autonomous kolhapur the unit 1 is related to basics of mechanisms and in that the lesson 1 is planned on to the discussions of structure and mechanism so as you can see on to the powerpoint presentation can you identify a structure within this bicycle you can pause the video and you can see whether you are able to identify structure of that bicycle also can you name a mechanism on this bicycle what is the mechanism which is used for building the bicycle so you can see here the frame of the bicycle is structure and the chain and sprocket which is used to drive the rear wheel of your bicycle is one of the example of a mechanism so talking about structures you can see structures every day in your life you can see the image of high rise buildings which is example of a structure then you can see vehicle frame which is frame of a train then you can see a bridge supporting a roadway which is used to cross rivers sea and then you can see the residential dwelling which is used for some of the structures like airports talking about the machinery it is a central part of everyone lives today you must have seen the example in 3d it also you can define a machine as anything which reduces human effort so it can be taken as machine and as you can see different types of machines are there can you able to identify what are the different types of machines are present you can pause the video and you can see which are the different types of machines are available so you can see the drilling machine which is used for machining of many of the components then you can see the tractor which is used for ag agricultural purpose then you can see a car which is used to have transport of human beings then you can see the bicycle which is used for doing the exercise so all these machines which are having working parts will be called as mechanisms so some of the examples related to it are the pulley wheels then the rack and pinion arrangement which is used for different uh gearing transmissions and then the cam and follower arrangement which is used in ic engine so basically by looking all looking at all these examples you are able to find out what are the differences between the structure and the mechanism so the basic difference if you want to find out it can be based upon the degrees of freedom so what is degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom if you go by the definition of it it is related to the number of independent coordinates required to specify the position of an object or mechanism so let us cut down this definition into parts the first thing is related to the number of independent coordinates so different types of coordinates such as the angle made by that link with respect to the horizontal it can be a one coordinate the distance in the plane in x direction and y direction it can be a coordinate for it so there are different coordinates so those coordinates should be independent that coordinate should not be dependent on to something else the second part of definition talks about specify the position that is at what position at what linear displacement at what angular displacement that link is present it should be specified by that coordinate and the third part 
of the definition talks about whether it is a object or a mechanism. So, suppose if you are placing an object in a space, it will be related to different degrees of freedom such as 6. That is, 3 axes we are having as a Cartesian coordinate system and for each of the coordinate, we can have translatory motion and we can have rotary motion. So, 3 axes into 3 translational motion and 3 rotational motion gives you 6 degree of freedom. So, talking about structure and mechanism, the degrees of freedom are like this. So, over structure or superstructure are going to have degrees of freedom which are less than 0. So, what it means is the degrees of freedom for superstructures are negative. So, from the point of understanding, you can see the example of superstructure as your tall towers. That if the tall towers are having degrees of freedom positive, so the, that tall tower is going to move. Whereas, if the superstructure is going to have negative degrees of freedom, what it means is, if any of the link is going to get broken, still that superstructure is going to get converted into structure. So, it is not going to have any mobility or it is not going to have any degree of freedom. Then talking about structure, it can be also called as frame, it can be also called as truss which is used in your aeroplane structures. So, in that your degrees of freedom are restricted to 0. It should be 0, then and then only it will be called as structure. As of mechanism, for degrees of freedom of mechanism should be greater than 0. It should be at least plus 1, plus 2, it can be any number. But it should be a positive number and it should be always greater than 0. Now, Talking about the next part is related to mechanisms, motion and the force. So, what is a mechanism? A system of moving parts that performs some function. So, some of the parts which are assembled together to perform a specific function, that assemblage of all the links is called as mechanism. So, you can see here a multi-cylinder inline engine which is used for many of the uh, heavy duty vehicles and passenger vehicles, commercial vehicles is having different parts such as piston, connecting rod, crank and the cylinder. So, what the multi-cylinder inline engine you are seeing here is a four cylinder engine. So, you can see four pistons, four connecting rods and a crankshaft which is common for all those four cylinders. And there is a wheel which is attached to the crankshaft which will be called as a flywheel which controls the speed fluctuations of that multi-cylinder engine. The next mechanism what we can see is related to the Geneva mechanism. So, in Geneva mechanism you can see there is a cam and there is a Geneva which is going to rotate and this mechanism is used for indexing operation. So, motion is defined as the process of continual change in the position of an object is called as motion. So, simply motion can be arbitrarily defined as a movement, whether it is a linear movement or angular movement that depends upon the position from which it had started the motion. Then we are going to discuss motion and the force. So, what is a force? Force can be strength or power. So, if I am talking about a linear translation, it can be arbitrarily defined as strength and for angular motions, it can be defined as power. So, if I am talking about the drilling machine, what are the different inputs which are needed for a drill work? So, the input for drilling is the lever of the drill is going to be pulled down and what is the output as the chuck of the drill moves down. Then as you can see, as you are going to apply a force, your column is going to get buckled. 
something on to the small level is going to happen with the tree. Then we will talk about different types of motions. So, there are main four types of motions. One is linear motion which is associated with train. Train is going to have linear motion that is it is going to have only translation. Then oscillatory motion which is for pendulum of a clock. Then a reciprocating motion which is for hacksaw and a rotary motion for a shaft. So, some of the examples in diagrammatic view are shown here. So, a pendulum which is an example of oscillatory motion, then train which is an example of linear translatory motion, then hacksaw which is an example of a reciprocating motion and a shaft which is an example of rotary motion. Then uh, uh, talking about linear motion, in linear motion movement will be in a straight line. So, it is going, going to have motion in x axis, y axis or z axis if you are choosing a Cartesian coordinate system. So, train is going to have translatory motion. So, a train on its tracks moves in a linear motion. So, you can uh, pause the video and you can see for different types of examples. So, can you give other examples of linear motion? The next type of motion is reciprocating motion in that the backward and forward movement is going to happen. So, the engine piston and walls moves up and down continuously to have reciprocating motion. So, you can see here the piston is moving up and down inside and cylinder and you can see the walls are moving up and down. So, this is an example of reciprocating motion. Then can you suggest some other examples wherein you are having reciprocating motion? You can pause the video and you can reflect on it. The next type of motion is related to the rotary motion, wherein motion is in circular direction, which can also be called as circular motion. So, the motion will be in terms of forward and backward movement in an arc. So, let us see what are the different types of examples of it. So, you can see a bicycle which is going to have its wheel which are having rotary motion. So, you can see a kid which is swinging on a, onto a pendulum. So, it is an example of rotary motion or oscillatory motion and also the pendulum of a clock or a child which is on swing, it is also an example of oscillatory motion. Then what causes that motion is nothing but the force. So, that is why it is very much important to study the forces. So, there are main five types of forces. First is compression, second is tension, third is shear, fourth is bending and fifth is torsion. So, by looking at the examples shown here, you can see the co columns the columns will be always in compression. The columns will be always in compression. Then the welded plates will be always in shear force. Then if I are, there are two people who are pulling the rope from each of the ends of it, the rope will be under tension force. Then you can see when the bending is going to happen, it will be comprising of two normal forces such as tension and compression together. And then you can see the pipe, if it is bended, it will be under a bending force. And whenever you are applying a torque onto some of the devices, such as with the help of spanner, if you are up applying a torque, it will be under a torsion force. So, the basic types of forces are compression, tension, shear, bending and torsion. 
again some of the examples of uh, compressive and tensile forces so a compressive force wherein you can see with the help of that li lever you are squeezing that uh, objects which are uh, inside that load frame then a compression force example is a spring which can be compressed or it can be having tension so with the help of tensile force it is going to be get elongated it can be also compressed so talking about the next force is bending and uh, static forces so if you want to bend a plate with the help of a hammer you can fix one on one end of the plate inside a frame and you can apply a bending uh, force with the help of a hammer then what is a static force and what is a dynamic force so a static force a load which is fixed at one point that is suppose if you are talking about a building it is not going to move so it will be a static force whereas a dynamic force or dynamic load will be called as a car which is moving onto a road which will be considered as a dynamic load so the load which is going to vary with respect to time will be considered as dynamic load whereas the load which is not going to vary with respect to time will be considered as static load so with this we are stopping here thank you